When I was very young, I rebelled against the social order so much that one day I decided to leave the city and walked to the pig farm nursery, took off all my clothes, lay down in the pig shit next to a friendly mother sow, and joined in feeding at her teeth with other piglets. But then, after an endless amount of time, I heard a velvet voice in my head. Give the world's people another chance. So, my mind lifted my nude, white, smelly body, carried it to the little local village pond, washed the pig shit off and sent it back to the rolling time. Maybe I should open a company of anarchists supplies. I have a gigantic bag filled with unused cobblestone. I had to climb the Boston Lookout Tower, sitting in the middle of large marshy fields, in order to find on the top beam a green painted sign, power to the working class. Life was bubbling all around me like the sound of crashing bones. Seen and not to be seen. Heard and not to be heard. Is it you? Fred Hampton? I wove my own scourge. I bent down and started to whip my own naked back. From time to time, I glanced in the direction of the audience. Mm-hmm. 
and then I asked are Catholic priests also queer I am talking to my daughter's teacher. Dear Mary, I have to say that you are an extremely good teacher and I am not saying that because you are black. I was looking at the window of the bank office. My deaf friend helped me read the lips behind the glass. Let's divide and then rule them. <laughs> lovely warm beam of sunlight touches her face. She kneels on one leg, filled with painful arthritis. The smallest mouse, hidden in the corner, her gruff voice. Milan, I remind myself every morning of my pale privilege. But I am already on the foggy street. running away from her inherited Catholic guilt. Chains on our human hands, cages around us. I noticed a chain running from a yard at a yard club all the way down to deep underwater, used for keeping rich people's boats close to them 
A rich boat owner is asking me what I see. Well, I see that the chain has three sections. First, above water, which is clean and shiny, not touched by rust, like those rich people from your club. Then I see the part that is under water, which is not rusty either, and the links are fat and strong, because there are rich criminals gathering wealth in the dark waters. But the part between these two sections is the working class one, where the high tides and low tides pulsate every single day and the tired links are eaten by a rust. The links are so weak and narrow, like autumn leaves with holes in them. Then I turned to the rich boat owner. But you depend on the weakest part of the chain to hold your boat. He starts to laugh and calls his wealthy fellows. I have to repeat what I see again and again and again and again and again. And while I stand there facing that mob of loudly laughing rich people, my legs get stronger and stronger. And my story is heard by more and more people. Angry Amatul told me. First, I have to get rich in order to help my poor fellow Afro-Americans. I am shocked. So first, you plan to walk on the backs of poor people to help heal their bleeding wounds later? The skies are getting gray. My daughter is sitting among many different looking kids on the merry-go-round. Black, white, yellow. circle is accelerating. The kids are laughing and screaming. More speed, more turns, faster unification. Colors are blending. 
I am trying to locate my daughter. The circle is a gray smudge. I see all my daughters. And happy skies are getting grayer. That morning, the light was so white that you could not see the whole rainbow shooting into your eyes. I was told by the administrator. Look, between us, you're in the worst category to get an art teaching job. You're old, white, Male and straight. <laughs> I mean, at least if you were transgender. My anger is good. The autumn leaves are falling on the sleazy sidewalk. They want to be glued to it forever. Winter is coming like many times in history. Wet, cold, and buzz of passing cars. Above my head is a huge billboard. Jesus, your only way to God. Anger is good because it purifies stupidity. Again, the people call for wars in the name of the only God. There is a painting where a small child is being chopped in half by a sword in the shape of the cross. A half century ago, a lad is walking into the biggest factory in Czechoslovakia producing heavy machinery. Five hours, 30 minutes after midnight, the sun is still sleeping. No time for showers, streaming with thousands of others through the factory gates. The real hell of a steel foundry welcomes me. Eight hour shifts for the 40,000 employees having millions of pictures of nude men's and women's bodies inside their stinky factory lockers. In blues rhythm, strong men showering chemicals into the muzzles 
of gigantic Siemens Martin steel furnaces. The sounds of exploding iron ore are ripping my ears. Dreams and any concepts of God are evaporating in the real reality of the extreme temperatures of the furnaces. Everybody has to use a different set of lungs to breathe the sharp stench of the melting ore and leave their big clean ones at home. Sweat is running like small streams down the gutters of my back. Fat women laughing at the workers' lost erections, <laughs> sitting like cakes in the boxes of their cranes, while moving huge red steel ingots above all our heads. A Romani man with big biceps calls himself the Foundry Negro, laughing at absolutely insensitive and cruel jokes. The draft beer inside the Foundry carried in big ceramic jars clinking against yellow teeth. Dark bread sandwiches with greasy pork wrapped in communist newspapers eaten while sitting on dusty metal chairs. The leg of my friend Suck being flattened by an ingot fast. They have to cut his stump with an axe so that he won't be broiled. The roasted skinned dog on a skew rotating above the cooling ingot. The sound of million pound hammers forging ingots is shaking the oil soaked ground. Bang, 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 bang is traveling through my brain while I am trying to fall asleep after each factory shift. During that sludgy winter with black snow lying on the streets, I need to upgrade my raw apartment. The horrible foundry beasts are all knocking on my door with their mind dirt and broken nails and are installing water pipes, heating, kitchen and bathroom for days. They laugh at the money offered them and scream at me, burn it in the fucking cremation ovens. I knew I could count on them. They were the salt of the earth, authentic 
offensively vulgar, dirty, smelly, but nutritious. Cambridge, spotless, fake perfume leftists, dancing on the tips of their sensitive tongues. The offense is removed from the inclusive air. The schedule of their psychoanalogists are filled up to the top. Each word is processed by weakest state of consciousness. Language is narrowed into the boarded up entrance to the brain's slaughterhouse. They want to call for the criminalization of our thoughts and require us to put dots into the words already popping out of our brains. They love love and politically correct correctness. Authenticity smells of unacceptability for them. Melting when hearing about atheistic science. Cancelling the culturally uncomfortable past is so orgasmically pleasurable for them. Reassuring each other of their pretentious solidarity and respect based on the perfectly organized phone planners in their hands. Atomization helps. Depending on your individual responsibility to build your apartment, they say. The bank's loans will help you and you can exploit and pay some undocumented workers to do the labor. They depend on the export of capitalism to keep their leftist bubbles aloft because it is not in their faces. It has brought me, 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 a nice computer-centered life. Small talk is becoming enormously huge. Driving their glossy cars steel for them is made by dirty slave labor very far from their cute reality on the other side of the globe they are giving birth to a new fake generation of pets in their gentrified lovely neighborhoods and pushing kids out of the horizon fucking emptiness fuck all of this
them. Fuck all of those morally decayed snobs judging human beings according to their choices of vaginas and penises while betraying women oppressed by religions. I hate their self-developed entitlement to the cute and safe environment and endless selection of dishes on their menus in fucking bourgeois restaurants. I hate the imposition of their fucking void and vain lives and values on the whole world. You bet. I will always be on the side of the dirty workers living in solidarity and authenticity and rejecting fakeness. When I saw the smelly steel foundries of Ohio, I had tears running down my face. Long live the deplorables of all colors of the earth. We need to return dirty and environment killing factories to our communities. We need to see that stuff is not produced by using endless, perfectly crafted sentences sent by computer clicks. We need to get rid of structured, idiotic, politically correct academic discourse that serves only as a means of job promotion for its parasitic creators. We need to return the foundries to the center of Cambridge so that the students developing their fake empty leftist discourse see and feel with their own eyes and skin the flames of melting steel. It is still night, waiting for the sunlight. Mm. A half dreaming bed lady is sitting in her Wuhan lab and observing a small butterfly 
on the research table. Ah. Wonderful, full of all the world's colors, even those invisible to the human eye. The first light beam of full spectrum breaking the window glass is knocking on her head. But lady wakes up and walks slowly out of the building. She wants to be again at home like all of us. The butterfly is following her. They both can hear the coming storm. Don't be afraid to be white. My dear black friend told me. Completely nude, I knocked on the same door of the maternity hospital through which my mother passed 68 years ago with me in her arms. I want to go back. I told the doctors assisting in the birth of another baby. <laughs> 